coming up on this episode of Falcon Fever. We sit down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with UM's new athletic director. Hear why he wanted to come to Montevallo and why he's really excited about seeing some dirt on our campus. Plus, see how the Montevallo community is leaving their mark on the softball team's new stadium in Orr Park. And we talk with volleyball standout Katie Best to find out what makes her a key member of the Falcons. Falcon Fever starts now. Hello and welcome to Falcon Fever. I'm Devin Cooley. And I'm Sloan Popple. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a new year for Falcon Fever and that means some changes to our show. That's right. This semester we're cutting back on stats and focusing more on the players and coaches that make Montevallo one of the standout universities in the Peach Belt Conference. Now we're also changing from a production schedule from a weekly sports recap show to a monthly feature show. We hope you enjoy the changes. Our show isn't the only thing that's seeing changes this semester. It's also the first semester for Montevallo's new director of athletics, Mark Richard. Falcon Fever's Amos Hollenhead recently sat down with the new leader of UM's athletic department. Take a look. Uh, it's great to have you here, sir. And uh, my first question to you is since you're here and you know, you're know you among Montevallo, tell us about yourself and how you receive your starting to work in athletics. You know, um, I'm from Pennsylvania. I went to uh, Clarion University, uh, played football up, up there, played one year of baseball. Uh, always wanted to get into athletics and uh, I've had a great opportunity. Went to the University of Florida for graduate school. I've worked at uh, numerous schools and I uh, was up in Pennsylvania working at Gannon University and uh, the Montevello job came open and I applied and, and going through the process, the interviews, I was able to land the job and I'm just, I'm extremely excited to be here. Uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, my transition has been uh, very heartwarming. People have reached out. They've been great. The Montevello faithful. So it's been a really, really uh, nice transition for me, and I'm very excited to be on campus. Well, we're glad to have you here, sir. And we've seen from just how you've been involved all around this region. You've, you've been to Auburn. You've been to Vanderbilt. You've been to the University of Florida. How is working on those positions preparing you to become an AD? I think what's really helped me out is I've got a chance to work with other great leaders and other great athletic directors. And I was talking to a friend today about, you know, working underneath uh, the commissioner of the SEC, Roy Kramer, in some of his leadership style. And then uh, when Coach, uh, Coach Kramer left, uh, Mike Slive came in and his leadership style. So, you know, we talked about people's leadership styles, and I think that's what I've taken away from a lot of the schools that I've worked at, is the different ADs and the dif different people you work with. It's been a great experience, and it's really helped me become the person and the leader who I am. That's great, sir, that's great. And what would you consider to be one of your greatest accomplishments working with many schools throughout your career? You know, I think one of the greatest accomplishments for me personally was when I was at Auburn, I took over the uh, equipment room and uh, we, we hired a new equipment coordinator. We completely redid how we did things at, uh, as far as the equipment room. We were, were a Russell school and we switched over and became an Under Armour school. So that whole contract, switching over from one apparel to another, uh, the whole process took a lot of time, but it's come out uh, to a lot better situation and I think you see that if you watch Auburn play f play football or you can see uh, you know see the student athletes wearing the Under Armour so very very proud of that whole tr that whole transition. Oh that's great and we would love for you to come here and do some of that great stuff over here in the Montevallo and speaking of coming here like what made you want to become Montevallo's new athletic director? I think uh, when when I worked at Auburn I had heard and I knew about Montevallo had never been on campus, but people would say what a beautiful campus it was. And, uh, and one of the things about myself is playing at Clarion, I'm a Division II guy, I play Division II ball, so I enjoy the Division II atmosphere. I enjoy where the student athlete is more of a student first than an athlete. When you look at Division I, it's, it's pretty much those guys are athletes first. You know, it's important that they win games there. At this level, we want to win, but still, student athletes becoming leaders, uh, taking care of their academics, doing the community service, 
doing all those well-rounded things that make them become the person that they will be down the road. I really enjoy that at the Division II level. So uh, that was important for me in making this decision to come to Montevallo. That's great to hear. That's great. And what are some of the things that you see in Montevallo that you like so much so far? You know, even when I came on my interview, it was important. I was always told that if you go visit a campus, it's important to see dirt turned over. And I know they're doing the new fine arts building. Also, it was great to see a new softball field being built and the track stadium that's being built. So the dirt that was turned over at Montevello is athletic dirt. So that was very, very enticing. It was great. It's very exciting. I think under Dr. Stewart's uh, leadership, there's a lot of good things happening. We now have this year two brand new sports with men's track and field starting this year along with the softball program. So. There's a lot of good and exciting things going on here at Montevallo. It's great to be a part of being a Falcon. That, it's really great to being here for so long and just seeing all of that atmosphere that Montevallo brings. And it's great that you're a part of it now, yeah. sir. And seeing down the road, what do you want to continue to bring and improve to this program? You know, some of the things we've targeted is one is the, the Fighting Falcons. And I, that's a student group that's kind of been there, but we're trying to really focus on getting more and more students involved. I'm working closely with our sports information department, uh, Wesley Hallman and Nick Moeller, and we're just trying to get that program going. Right now we have 170 students signed up, so if a student wants to be a part of that program, pre please contact the athletic department. But the game environment, trying to get students fired up about the athletic events and coming out, and watching a soccer game or watching a basketball game or whatever it may be, come on out and see. We've got some great student athletes who really perform at a high level and trying to create that excitement is, is one of our, our vocal points. Mr. Mark Richard, thank you so much. Amos, thank you for having me on. Thank you so much. That is our interview with our new athletic director, Mr. Mark Richard. Go Falcons. To find out how you can get involved with the Fighting Falcons that A.D. Richard mentioned in that interview, just go to MontevalloFalcons.com and go to the Fan Zone tab. With the new softball field nearly complete, the Montevallo community rolled up their sleeves to help put the finishing touches on the team's dugout. Falcon Fever reporter Chloe Allen shows us the people of Montevallo lend a helping hand to welcome the team. The University of Montevallo softball team hosted the Leave Your Mark on Orr Park event in their new field in Orr Park. With the team's inaugural season just over four months away, the team as well as the university gave the community a chance to leave their mark as well as words of encouragement and to wish the Falcons good luck in their upcoming season. The Boys and Girls Club of Montevallo even got to participate. The university has paired up with our, where we're practicing right now. We are joining with the uh, high school and using the high school softball complex. So right behind us is the Boys and Girls Club. And they have graciously come over and introduced themselves and taken pictures with us and asked if they could uh, give us this idea and let them kind of be the young founding people of the university's softball complex. So we invited them to come out and they will be here to put all of their names and paint on the and chalk on the wall. So they are helping us leave a mark on the field as well. So we, we are big into community service and want our kids to be role models for the local community. And that's kind of what we're doing with this event today. The idea for the event was originally Frida Shivers of the Boys and Girls Club. Joe Williams, the chairman of the advisory board says that this event will always be a wonderful memory for the kids. Well, the Boys and Girls Club is just a great asset for our community. And their fellowship and working with the softball team as they, as they develop their new program, it's going to be something that they're going to be proud of for the rest of their, their school years and be able to come watch the girls play as they play softball. For Falcon Fever, I'm Chloe Allen reporting. UM's inaugural softball game is set for February 15, 2015. Well, now it's time to highlight one of UM's outstanding student athletes as this episode featured Falcon. Being team leader requires responsibility, dedication, as well as the ability to motivate others. Women's volleyball player Katie Best exhibits those qualities and so much more. Falcon Fever's Sydney Fields gives us more information about Katie as she continues her final season on the team. <laughs> Senior middle blocker Katie Best is looked up to by her teammates as a strong leader. Not just because of her stats and awards, but because she has earned respect from her teammates and coaches through her actions on and off the court. And with leadership also comes responsibility. 
which is why it's so important for a leader's words to match with their actions. Well, it's a lot of pressure, you know. Um, so it's all about keeping consistent with how you act and things that you say and how you play. Obviously, Katie stands out on the court. But what exactly makes her stand out as a person? Her confidence is amazing. Like, anything she does, she does with confidence. And it's not too much. It's something that's comfortable to be around because it makes you feel like you're able to do better on and off the court. Although Katie Best will be graduating in May of 2015, head coach Katie O'Brien says they have a strong junior class that she believes will step up to the plate as leaders. It will be a smooth transition for the most part, but not saying that anyone's replaceable. Reporting for Falcon Fever, it'll be in a different way. I'm Sydney Fields. After graduating this May, Katie plans on going to graduate school to pursue a career as a sports psychologist. And speaking of volleyball, we want to take a second to congratulate U UM's head volleyball coach on reaching a career milestone. That's right, Coach Katie O'Brien racked up her 300th win as a coach when the Falcons beat Flagler 3-2 on September 26th. 122 of Coach O'Brien's wins were earned since she came to UM. She currently is in her seventh year at the volleyball program as the team's head coach. Congrats, Coach O'Brien, on this outstanding accomplishment. The Falcons are seeing several new faces in the athletics this season, and one of them is Chase Gaskins, the new coach of the cheerleading team. Falcon feeders Chloe Allen caught up with him during practice to discuss his plans to bring Montevallo some more spirit. I am here with the head cheerleading coach of Montevallo, Chase Gaskins. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Well, I know you're well. practicing with the girls there, working hard today. Well, this is your first year mm -hmm. here at the University of Montevallo and your first year as head coach. Tell me, how is the transition? It's been great so far. A little adjusting, but, uh, but an awesome start. And uh, hopefully it will continue into the rest of the year and then on to the years. So, yeah, it's been really good, though. And you have been through so many programs. You cheered at the University of Alabama, and you just came from UAB. Um, how is it different coming from those schools here to Montevallo? Okay. Uh, well, mostly the biggest thing is, is no football here at Montevallo, which, you know, has its ups and downs. But that kind of takes away a little bit of the preparation going into fall, which does make it a little bit easier for the team and me. Uh, but And also just the size of the place, the physical size of the campus and all that, you know. Uh, and going from, you know, 20, 40,000 students to two, 3,000 students, you know, that's definitely a, a, a little bit of a challenge, especially when it comes to, like, the recruiting side of things. But it's, uh, but it's, it's good. It's a good challenge that I'm, that I'm looking forward to. So. And this is your first standout year. What are your expectations for your first season? Uh, right now, I mean, kind of have an open plate about expectations. You know, I have a couple in my head, you know, that I've written down. But as far as I'm, I'm already kind of looking into the future, you know, so I'm, I'm already looking into recruiting for these next couple years and also building up the girls that we already have and guys to continue on the program here at Montevallo. So, yeah. Well, thank you again, and good luck to you for the rest of the season. Good luck to the girls. Thank you very right. much. I appreciate it. Thank you. We look forward to seeing Coach Gaskins and the Falcon cheerleaders take the sidelines again this fall. Remember, you can catch more Falcon Fever on YouTube and on social media. To see current and past episodes of Falcon Fever, including extended interviews with players and coaches, just go to YouTube and subscribe for the Montevallo For You channel. And for Falcons news and updates, you can connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just search for Falcon Fever on Facebook and follow at UM Falcon Fever on Twitter and Instagram. And last but not least, you can get extended sports coverage anytime on MontevalloFalcons.com. There you'll find schedules, team rosters, live stats, and more. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode of Falcon Fever. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you again next time.